You know, when you think about it, our gardens would be a lot more dull and drab places without the fabulous colour of azaleas and rhododendrons to greet us each spring. And there's many different sorts, of course. Some are small and compact, some are easy to grow, some are a little bit more challenging. And if you're looking for one that's really tough and hardy and has a tremendous amount of potential, then I think I would like you to know a lot more about this wonderful variety called Rhododendron Dark Lord. For here's one that, as you see, is not only really beautiful, it's also a really good, hardy, tough, easy to grow variety that has in its parentage native varieties like Rhododendron catobiense that grows in the Allegheny Mountains. So here's one that has tough, hardy parentage, but look at the flowers. These dark red flowers are really amazing in that they have this lush, dark burgundy red. Now, whether you call it burgundy, merlot, cabernet, or claret, whatever color you want to describe, they certainly do stand out because of their dark, rich coloring. And when you look at the buds here, you'll see that they actually have almost a black coloring just before they emerge. Now, the other thing I want to show you is how this plant is so free flowering. Look at the amount of flower bud that's on its rounded habit. You, it's got so many flowers that you can hardly see the foliage. And that comes from the breeding of the parentage of this plant. It was raised back in the 1970s at the famous Western Nurseries in Massachusetts. Raised a lot of good stuff coming out of there. They set out to grow and produce varieties of rhododendrons that are first of all hardy to zone five, ones that were going to be able to cope with the conditions up in New England. They then wanted varieties that are shorter and more compact, ones that showed good resistance to pests and diseases, and if possible, also ones that would extend the flowering season at both ends, earlier flowering ones and also later flowering ones. And when you look at this plant, you can see all of those characteristics all coming into play. And what's more, it's a plant that will get to about four to five foot high by about the same wide. Eventually, a very old plant is likely to get a bit, a bit taller than that and is likely to spread out to be a little wider rather than tall. But to all intents and purposes, you're probably looking at a rounded shaped plant that's around about four to five foot high. And then, as I say, it's going to be covered each spring with lots of these glorious, almost black buds that open up to these really rich, lush looking flowers and what's neat about it too is you look into the flower you'll see the stamens the male parts that have the pollen on them are a bright white amazing how they contrast with each of the flowers just to put that little bit extra expression into the flowering power of this gorgeous variety Raised, as I say, at the Western Nurseries, it kind of was never put into production, never named, until a production manager from Briggs Nurseries, Dan Meyer, was visiting one day. He looked at it and then suggested the name Dark Lord. And that's how this variety got its name and how you should probably look at growing it in your garden. Because it comes from a tough, iron-clad parentage, it's a really good plant for you to grow in a wide variety of places in your garden. You could use it as a kind of shelter belt at the back of a bed or border. You could certainly put it in as a beautiful specimen. You could plant it en masse to be able to give off all of this rich coloring. There's lots of places that you can enjoy growing this variety that I think has a very, very big future in front of it. This is Rhododendron Dark Lord.